many pessimists who think printed books will soon be a thing of the past may want to pay very close attention to this next story. It's about a Canadian artist who sees more than words in old books. He sees beautiful pictures. Special correspondent Jeff Glor went up north to see for himself. Jeff, hello to you. Gail, hello to you. The artist's name is Guy Laramie, and what he does to books might seem strange until you see the finished result. When Guy Laramie goes to work, lab coat, rubber gloves, circular saw, he almost looks like he's a doctor going in for surgery. But Laramie is a long way from putting things back together. He takes them apart, cutting, shaving, excavating, turning vintage books into stunning landscapes. It's a valley in China with the, the rice gardens. Laramie's been working as an artist for 30 years, but this idea only came to him in 1999, when he was in a metal shop in his native Montreal, and he saw a sandblasting cabinet. I took a book and put it in there, put the sandblasting gun onto it, and that was it. This happened completely by happenstance. I don't know where this idea came from. And within seconds, I saw the old project unfolding. I saw landscape. I saw the whole thing. All this is gathered. Really 13 years later, the vision realized. Incredibly detailed sculptures made only of paper and book bindings. A valley surrounded by lush hills. Caves carved into a mountainside. Canyons framing rivers. Since I'm in love with books, often before destroying them, I just go through them. When people see what you do to books, do some people say, listen, you, you can't, books are sacred. Why are you carving them up? I'm making them even more sacred because what I do is a sacrifice. A sacrifice that Laramie says makes a statement about our information age. Can there be too much data? Are we drowning in a sea of easy answers? I got drawn by this idea that why do we need to know so many things? Could you, in fact, know more about the world by knowing less? These days, every single bit of knowledge you'd ever want is nothing more than a Google search away. You think that's not necessarily a good idea? Well, there's too much. We get lost, and what we lose is ourselves. That sounds very Eastern Zen, gaining true knowledge by erosion, not accumulation. And it is. It's also hugely popular. Laramie's carvings now sell for up to $20,000 a piece, with demand rising. I remember having an Encyclopedia Britannica collection as a kid. It didn't look like this. Well, I changed it a bit. He gets his ideas by walking into old bookstores, and not by reading, but looking. I don't go to movies anymore. I don't go to theater anymore. I don't even listen. I barely listen to music. But when I enter in the bookstore, it's like, wow. Wow quickly turns into work. As he whittles down all those words into scenery that can be so captivating, there are no words. I mean, landscape doesn't say anything. It doesn't have the goal of convincing you, of selling you ideas. It's beautiful. You feel more alive. You feel you're part of it. Beautiful. Yeah. How did you find him? <laughs> we, we saw him online, actually, and now he's getting so many requests because so many people are following it. I mean, people are actually calling him and asking him to carve, you know, pictures of their pets or their dogs into the side of his books. He's not so into that. <laughs> he, has, he has politely declined <laughs> these requests. He says he wants to, to stick to landscaping. Yeah. So what happens to him now? Well, he's going to keep making them, but right now he can't keep up with demand. I'll tell you what's interesting is that you saw him behind that piece of glass. He used to carve these books out in the open, but he developed some fairly serious health issues because he was breathing in all that dust. Oh, so now he has to do it differently, as you can see behind that pane of glass in the sandblaster. Is it harder? Sorry. I think it is, but I think he's learned how to do it. It must be, yeah, because he has to, it's more difficult to control, for sure. I remember as a kid when I saw the Encyclopedia Britannica, I said, I had one of those. Did you have a favorite piece after you walked his, his studio? I, I think it was the Encyclopedia. Was, I yeah, thought that was I, fascinating. It was eight feet long, and he spent months, and some of these projects he spends up to four months working on, and you can see how detailed they are, how much time he spends on them. It's amazing. I thought that was yeah. great.